The airman clinging to this aeroplane is about to drop off to test the Irvin parachute, which was being adopted by the RAF in 1924. These initial trials are made at Henlow during that year, and it was the first time, at least in this country, that the slow-motion cine camera was airborne for the cause of aeronautical research. The camera, a bulky one, was mounted on the gun ring and fully exposed to the slipstream. During the Second World War, the dropping of men, armament and supplies of all sorts became an urgent necessity. A lot of research went into designing parachutes for dropping the smallest containers to those needed for such things as trucks or air-sea rescue boats. For these heavy loads, multiple parachutes are used. Should things go wrong, lines become entangled or the canopy is damaged in any way, the cine record becomes invaluable. Extensive trials were carried out to determine their performance, the speed and height from which they could be dropped and their loading capacity. At Ringway, the wartime parachute training establishment, cine cameras were in constant use recording the practice jumping of paratroops, and at one time every jump was photographed with 16mm cameras fitted to the aircraft. By this means it was possible to account for the extremely rare fertility and to take the necessary steps to prevent recurrence. Films also played an important part in enabling the men to study landing techniques and in this way rectify their faults and lessen landing casualties. Here is another application of the parachute to shorten the landing run of large aircraft. In this case the Vulcan is at the end of its run and we can see the ribbon parachute in detail. The lower part of the canopy is fluttering in the jet stream. Here is something faster, the Fairy Delta with a cluster of three brake parachutes. 